Hello, it is January 31st, 2022. This is Ask the World Burns. I'm your host, Randall Burns. Now, Tesla in their latest earnings report said they're going to be no, no more new products anytime soon. But what that kind of ignores is that they have several products that are relatively new that are ramping up as we speak. Uh, you know, they, they, they have you know, the, the semi, which they've mentioned before and they promised much earlier. Uh, they, they have the home power system, solar panels, batteries, inverters, hardware and software to interact with the local grid to basically be a utility. Another is the Las Vegas Loop, which is a essentially a rapid transit system built on Tesla hardware are built around Tesla hardware with the help of the Boring Company, which is its own company, which is Elon Musk calls it his hobby. <laughs> uh, but today we're going to look at Tesla Insurance, which is being sold right now as we speak in five states. There's 45 to go, and there's a lot more revenue to be generated. And we're going to go into some of the dimensions on that one. Tesla has had problems with insurance companies delivering poor service for their automobiles. So they kind of felt they had to step in and I don't blame them. Okay. Insurance companies are not good at dealing with new technologies. They're supposed to be good at managing risk. I would argue that they're really not. What, they're, what they do tend to be good at is buying politicians and working the regulatory environment to their advantage. And I've seen that up close and personal in a Granted, an over-the-top case, that was the Risk Corp case in Florida, which was a property workers' comp insurance company, highly regulated business, and I spent over two years helping put the CEO in prison. He deserved it. That was a good start. They swept it under the carpet and didn't go any further. But what is truly revolutionary is that in four out of the five states where Tesla is selling now, they're using the sensors on their car to help give them feedback on the driver and use it to adjust the rates. Now, this is revolutionary. No other insurance company can do anything like this. They look at your driver's record. They look at maybe a few key demographic facts. Tesla's looking at your actual driving. And they do that based on the sensors and other devices they have within their automobiles. I've seen a, one customer claim that he's paying 40% less for Tesla insurance than he would with one of their leading competitors, which was the best deal he could find otherwise. And because it's a new vehicle, he has to have insurance both on the vehicle and his liability insurance. But still, this is a big a big difference, 40% right then and there. And I would argue that they haven't really even started to fully utilize the database that they're accumulating. They're just barely starting. And full self-driving as it comes online, which I'm thinking is going to be around 2028, 20, 2029. It's going to be a bit longer than Elon's notoriously bad scheduling indicates, but it's going to happen. And that's going to take it down quite a bit further. And this is all, these are all major contributions to total cost of ownership. And it also means that Tesla is in a position to take the customers they want and leave the big insurance company with the dregs, the ones they don't want. So, and, and I think that's going to accelerate. Now, I've actually worked in the insurance industry. As I said, you said before, I worked on an investigation of an insurance CEO. I also worked for a company that was doing a vertical market package for the workers' comp insurance business. I've also worked as an actuarial trainee in, in the pension actuarial firm, but it's still the basics are similar. I know a little bit about insurance. I'm, I don't consider myself an expert by any means. There are people that dedicate much of their life to that. I have not. But I've seen a little bit about what the business is about. But one of the things that one of my employers told me early on is that insurance companies are like banks with strange withdrawal rules. And there's some real truth to that. And 
all major, all really big auto companies have their own relationships with their own banks and, and financial firms. GM, Ford, they all do it to one degree or another. And the thing is that when you get big enough, this is a pretty much a guaranteed cash cow. And it also gives you a lot of power in other dimensions, as we'll go into in a little bit. Um, a lot of the financial involvement of auto companies has been through auto financing. They, they needed financial firms that would do auto financing when that was happening early on. The, e the EV business is changing that dramatically. Now, one company that is the, the biggest and the one that I think is most, the closest to be a Tesla target is Berkshire Hathaway. And they are the they are the owners of Geico. That's Warren Buffett's company. A lot of what Warren Buffett did was he brought modern financial management into the stodgy insurance business. Before that, a lot of their investments were things like government bonds. And they still hold a lot of government bonds, but they've also branched out. And Warren Buffett leveraged that to build a financial empire, leveraging his the Geico investment platform. And bought a lot of well understood name brands. They're now under the Berkshire Hathaway umbrella and with the good and bad that that entails. Now, the thing about Berkshire Hathaway is they have about $300 billion in owner's equity. They also have, an, a, they have a bit over $300 billion in owner's equity and they have a similar amount in reserves for the insurance. Now the reserves for the insurance are regulated uh, in what they can invest in. I'm not sure exactly what the regulations are. I did not research it carefully for this video. But they also do have some flexibility in how they can invest this stuff. They can invest in utilities. Well, Tesla has a utility. And there'll be people that want financing to contribute to that. And they'll be in a position to provide it. Now, another connection here that's important is that Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway have played a major role in investing in BYD, which is the closest thing I see right now to a true rival of Tesla, in that they have a chip business, they have an AI capability, they're way behind Tesla, but they've at least started assembling the pieces into a single company like Tesla has. And the thing about it is that other companies relying on NVIDIA are going to be relying on NVIDIA to do a one-size-fits-all solution, which is inherently difficult. Tesla does not. Tesla can just rush away and do a comprehensive solution and worry about customizing it to other hardware later down the road at their leisure, which I think they should do, and I think it would be highly profitable for them as a business, but that's something coming down the road. Now, the real expansion of Tesla insurance is contingent on them licensing their hardware and software and AI components of their automobiles to other automotive vendors. And for that matter, other vendors of things like heavy equipment and farm equipment, John Deere and Caterpillar, for example. And I actually think there are niches for that for e-bikes and auto cycles and the whole, the whole transportation ecosystem. This is something that I don't think has dawned on them. I actually don't think it's a good idea for Tesla to get into the auto cycle business right away. I think they might do well to um, finance Aptera or Lip Motors and make sure that they have a, ch have a shot at taking that market on, a fr on terms friendly to Tesla. But I, I, I think that it'd be best to let other people fight that one out, not take sides, just make sure that there's a level playing field and a lot of competition and that the, may the best vendor win. The niches that Tesla needs to occupy are the commanding heights of the economy. That includes things like the what, what in uh, aircraft would be the avionics, but the software hardware solution. That's a hu really huge ticket item. It'll be a substantial part of automotive par profits. And insurance is another one. There shouldn't, you know, they, they can they can be in a situation, you know, nobody, few people complain about how big a role Geico plays in the insurance business. Tesla can do the same thing and do so very profitably. 
and use it to leverage their transformation of the economy very effectively. And in, doing, in, in taking this path, Tesla will be supporting key aspects of their mission of moving the world towards sust sustainable energy. And it'll keep their employees happy. It'll keep their backers, their cultural backers happy. There'll be people in Congress that'll be blindsided because this is not what they planned on. Well, that's going to be their tough luck. They're going away probably anyway. As a shareholder, I really want to see them start getting more aggressive about the licensing and start talking timeframes and they don't need to wait for FSD to be fully completed to start this process. They can have those ready for the switch, just like they're getting their own vehicles ready for the switch. And that needs to start right away. And that's going to boost the insurance business. The, the robot and, and the and true FSD may be years away. I'll send a link to the Metaculous projection on when level five autonomy is, is certified. That is a verifiable goal that's, Elon unfortunately talks in terms of unverifiable goals sometimes. And we need to have firm, externally validated milestones on this to be scientific about the forecasting. Now, insurance is more than just auto insurance, of course. Homeowners is another logical place for them to go into because of the solar, pan the solar panel roofs and the home power systems. And that's one where, as, as somebody who's lived off the grid for 20 plus years, I can tell you that insurance companies don't understand this. They do not serve us well as customers. Tesla is in a position to change that and should. And the key fact here is that Tesla, from, a, from an investment standpoint, is simply not an automotive company. It is a AI and software and chip produce and chip design company that has targeted the automotive industry as their first major takeover. And there are others down the road, insurance, utilities, transportation and infrastructure. There'll be others, there are, I would like to see them talk about their spin-off products on the way to a full auto humanoid autonomous robot. And that's the one that I'll be pushing on in a separate, in a separate episode. That I'll try to link to also. Now, in general, insurance has been a massive corporate welfare enterprise. The U.S. performs poorly in every major regu regulated business. There's a lot of dead weight here to clear out, and Tesla would be doing a service to us all by helping to clear it out, of, out from the United States, because this functions really as a huge tax on the general public and does not generate public revenue. It may generate a lot of legal bribes for politicians, but that's nothing that helps anyone, including them, not in the long run. Okay. And so I, I welcome their activity in the insurance business. I would love to see the major insurance companies take a haircut. And there's a lot of dimensions on how this happens, one of which is going to be political. I, I intend, for example, to write my state representatives and tell them I want this legalized in the state of Washington ASAP, because I think it really ought to be done. And it's, and the sooner that we let our state reps know what's happening on there, the sooner we can get really cheap insurance rates on a mass basis as we deserve. So this is Randall Burns thanking you for watching. Please do hit the like button. Do hit subscribe to the channel. I want to produce more top content for you. I'm doing this as a labor of love both for the audience and for my nonverbal autistic son, who's the, going to be the recipient of any revenues as they start to come from this. I'm not, I'm doing this as a volunteer. And I hope this is helpful to you and I want to produce more content for you, but I also need your help to do that. So thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you again soon. You take care as the world burns, signing off, Randall Burns. <laughs>